An ancient civilization with great cities, monolithic statues, and magical creatures turned into a land of poverty and addiction with a corrupt police force where the creatures are regarded as murderous, brutal animals rather than adorable sidekicks. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what destroyed Power World, and using the lore and the gameplay, I've connected the dots to find out what destroyed this once great civilization and brought us into the modern day that Power World takes place in. So for those of you who are unaware, let's get caught up. Power World launched as an early access game in January of 2024. Over 12 million copies were sold on Steam in just the first week, and it peaked at 2 million concurrent players, which is absolutely insane. And then downloads on Xbox were crazy. I believe they reached 7 million shortly after that. Most people just thought this was a meme game. Pokemon with guns, a cheap knockoff of the obviously stolen Nintendo-owned rights to cute animals that you can capture in games. Huh. But obviously it wasn't. It was so much more. On top of being really fun to play, the world had mystery and questions that needed answers, like, what is the deal with the big tree? What's up with the boss towers? Why haven't you subscribed to this channel yet? Seriously, it's, it's so easy. Here, here, let's do it together. Ready? And there you go. Now you're subscribed. And obviously, the most important question that we're here to answer today what happened to the ancient civilization? You see Palpagos, no, I'm not kidding. That's the name of the island in the game, and it's not the first time that you're going to see Pal just thrown into random words inside the game world. But anyway, the island of Palpagos, which in the lore is part of the world that we live in, just covered and hidden in a magical fog, shows many ancient structures, old cities, monuments, statues, and so much more. A place that was once vibrant, with many people and culture, and yet the world we play in is void of all of that. There are a few small settlements here and there, but most of the people that we come into contact with are the five factions that war for territory. But there's no industry, poverty is everywhere, there's a settlement, and this person got a knee injury. But why, in a world where pals exist, do these problems exist? Well, when you start looking into the lore that's given in the diary entries, there's not a lot. But good lord, is it dark. One faction acts as a police force and then turns around and sells drugs to back to the population. This is the PIDF. They use one arm of the faction to sell the drugs, and they use the other arm of the faction to arrest the buyers, find them for possession, take back what they haven't used already, and then resell it in a really horrible, vicious cycle. Just listen to the leader of the PIDF, Marcus Dryden. What a joke. All these idiots do around here is snort up stims. It's a real dump. There's no point in even trying to control it. PIDF doesn't belong in a place like this. The guys I arrested today couldn't even pay the fine. Guess it's to be expected if they spend all their money getting a fix. Bet they can't imagine the money they pay ends up lining my pockets. I make a profit when they buy, and then I make more when I arrest them for possession. And I even get back my product to sell again when I confiscate what they have. It's a grand scheme. They're idiots, and I'm a genius. But this is just their punishment for being fools. Understand? This island is just my little sandbox to play on. For all I care, they can live their little sad lives without ever knowing I'm the one supplying their fix and the one controlling it. If I let them get carried away, they'll just go off demanding rights that ain't fit for garbage like them. Oh yeah, it gets dark. Kinda how I like my coffee. So I started wondering, why are all the NPC characters so poor outside of drug sales and fines? Who else makes money? While I was playing the game, I realized that the only people that have money are the five factions, which are the Rain Syndicate, the Free Pal Alliance, Brothers of the Eternal Pyre, the PIDF, which we talked about a minute ago, and the PAL Genetic Research Unit. The traders also have money, and Black Marketeers, and then you, the player. Now, outside of one of these, which are the item traders, everyone else has PALs, and more specifically, the skills to get the PALs. 
You see, at the beginning of the game, you're told that pals are crazy dangerous and leave mountains of bodies in their wake. That's right, these adorable creatures are culprits of mass human casualty. But come on guys, look at look at Depresso. He's he's so adorable while he's mining. Look at him. Does he look like a vicious murderer to you? Anyway, because of how dangerous these pals are, not everyone can capture and tame them. In fact, it seems like only a small handful of people can, and most of these people are part of the five factions, and have to hunt the pals in large groups. Now in game, these groups are just mobs that you fight to get XP and items, but in the lore, they are forces that control the island. Let me explain. Pal World above all else is a survival game, with monster catching mechanics to, well, force these adorable murderous animals into a life of servitude to you. All jokes aside, it's actually a huge quality of life improvement for a survival game. Basically, all the tedious work that you hate doing, the pals do it for you. Need rock to build materials? Have your pals do it. How about wood? Yep, have the pals do it. Uh, what about building complex computer chips to build electrical equipment? That's right. Have the pals do it. it it's seriously, it's awesome, guys. I, have the pals do everything. As far as gameplay goes, this is super helpful. It gives you more time to explore, catch more pals, level up, build your dream house. But this is exactly what I think killed the ancient civilization. You see, pals just showed up one day. And I actually have a theory on that, which you guys should let me know down below if you guys want me to do a video on that, because I think the humans are the problem. And I think they're the reason that the pals showed up and why the pal world is the way that it is. But anyway, after the pals showed up, they started causing a lot of trouble. At some point, they were integrated into society, and even some of them were worshipped and had statues created for them. Now, it sounds super awesome to have a pal do all the work for you, but what happens on a longer timeline? In the game, you can see exactly what this does. In the beginning of the game, you had to go find food and cook it. You had to go out and collect materials. You had to do a lot. But as you get more pals, you start to do a lot less. Gone are the days of humans farming, crafting, mining, logging, cooking, and even making medicine. In this world, you have to ask the question, why would you hire a human to do anything for you when a pal can do it so much faster and cheaper? Kind of sounds like the conversation we're having in the real world about AI. It seems so great to have these magical creatures do all this stuff for you, the main character. But what if you aren't the main character? What if you had to go home to your family and tell them that you were fired from the farm or the mines because you just can't keep up with automation? I mean, I mean, pals. I mean, I, I meant, I meant pals. How quickly does that change society? What does this do to one's mental state? How would that change the world? Or in this case, the island that you live on? You see, the economy is a complex structure of people trading their talents and skills for the necessary items that they need to live. As pals started taking over, the talents and skills that made the market a place for trade for everyone, it became a place for trade only for those who could capture these highly dangerous magical creatures. You see, as poverty started to rise, it gave way to things like depression and probably addiction. As the cycle continued, less and less human beings were able to keep up. And before you say, why don't you just become a pal tamer, Royce? Ask yourself this question. How many of us in the real world can go out and capture and tame a wild bear or a wolf or a mustang or a mountain lion? Well, the answer is not many of us. And that's why it's so rare. That's why when we see videos of people doing it, where they're going out and taming these wild animals that a lot of us can't even imagine having, it's really something to marvel at. And it's why those videos get a lot of views. But the difference between the real world and power world is these animals are just companions. And it's really, really cool to see humans bond with animals like that. But in the pal world, they replace the carpenters, they replace the craftsmen, the electricians, all of them. And honestly, I think that this is the single biggest thing that led to the downfall of the ancient civilization of Pal World. Is that once the Pals took over, well, there was really no need for humans to be around anymore and do the things that were necessary to keep that civilization going. So hopefully you guys like my little conspiracy on how the ancient civilization of Pal World was destroyed 
I put a lot of thought into this and when I finally realized, oh my gosh, yeah, that's a pretty easy answer and the Lord somewhat backs it up too. Do you guys think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? What are your theories about how the ancient civilization collapsed in Power World? And as always guys, thank you so much for tuning in to A Drink With Crazy and hopefully you guys stick around for the next video because next week's video is gonna be insane. I think it's gonna blow your mind a little bit. But as always, until next time, cheers everybody.